When did you run your first stock car race? What was what was the first NASCAR event you ran? Okay. What year was that? Well, in 1998, 1997. Okay. Right. Um, Mark Simo from No Fear yep. wanted to go into NASCAR, and he. So who are the Who are the Simo brothers? Simo brothers are my two best friends that started the company called No Fear. And so I used to wear that hat. Didn't even know who made it, who where it came from. Yep. And I had a No Fear hat I wore all the time. So we met at the runoffs one year. Their 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 partner was running, and he was kind of a knucklehead. And when they owned a company called Life's a Beach, the Bad Boy Club, and he goes, "Yeah, my partners are coming." I'm like, "Well, these guys, they must be the brains of the operation, because surely you're not. You're just you know a wingding." And they showed up, and it was kind of like when we met for the first time. Like we just hit it off. Like I, I just there was something about them that we just gelled, and we just became great friends. So when they started the company, No Fear, they're like, oh, "You should come on out, you know, come on out and be a part of it." I'm like, "No, I want to be a race car driver. Like I, I, that's, I want to put 100 percent into racing." And they're like, I oh, just come out here and you can race all you want. And you just, when you're not, you have a job. I'm like, well, okay. So, you know, I loaded up my Chevy pickup and drove to California. Where were you? I was in Connecticut. Still. Still. Still in Connecticut. In what year? This was 92. Okay. So in 92, I drove out to California and moved, they, moved out there. Moved out there. They're like, you come live with us. And it's funny <laughs> to live with them. The first few months, well, I get there, and, you know, like in the afternoon, and we went out and ate and came back to the, to the warehouse, and we're all talking to BS, and, you know, at like 6.30, I'm like, hey, when are we going to the house? Oh, no, no, no house. Just come on back here. I'll show you where you're staying. And, and we were actually staying on, on shelves, you know, s- you know, warehouse shelves with rolled out flannel. Those were our beds, and that's we lived in that warehouse for like three. They had no money for anything they had no, else. No, nah. well, I don't know whose warehouse is it. Is it is that it, a thing? It was the No Fear Warehouse. They lived oh, it was in the it. No Fear oh, Warehouse. They yeah. slept we on the shelves. Slept yeah. in the, in and, and I'm like, hey, look. The next day, I went to Costco and bought three air mattresses. I go, we don't need to sleep on that rolled out flannel. We'll sleep on an air mattress. Upgrade. <laughs> Upgrade. We upgraded. Roll big. Yeah, I'm gonna get my credit card going. Yeah. <laughs> Had you? Were you thinking? Uh, damn, what I do? <laughs> no, because that first night, it was, I mean, I never had that much fun. I mean, these guys were wild. I mean, yeah. it was Southern California and beautiful girls and people were in everything and nice weather. And yeah. I was the smartest thing I ever did. I go, after about two days, my hometown is Carlsbad, California. Mm-hmm. Forget Connecticut. I, I, <laughs> I just owned it. Yeah, I just owned it. Yeah, you're, everybody knows you as California, right? Like, right. If it, but th- I can't believe that you didn't go out there until 92. Yeah, that, no, I was only you know, 25 or something. Wow. Yeah. Had no idea. Yeah. Okay, so they also started Spy, right? Yes. All right, so No Fear is gone. Not today. Yeah, right? today. No, for, no, for, no Fear is gone. That's, that was a... A big brand, at iconic. One point. You know, yes. it lasted twenty years. You know, and unfortunately, in the unfortunately, Those kind they, of things have a, in life. They uh, they, they made a, a mistake. Life. You know, they they didn't see the the online thing coming. Uh-huh. Mm. They opened up all these retail stores, and they were going great. But in '08, when the recession happened, it killed them, and yeah. they didn't have enough cash to survive. Huh. So, so, so they were a statistic. Interesting. So uh, because I th- I still think of No Fear as this uh, kind of a cool brand. Yeah, really, yeah. it was. Really cool and yeah. fun. And, and then they started Spy, which yep. is a great product, great sunglass. We've done some stuff with them. Yep. Still do. Still do. Wearing them right now. Oh, you designed your first glass. Yeah, I remember I that. I did. The I remember the, Mo. the press conference. Uh, I remember doing the press conference, those first sunglasses. That's you, right. Yep. How did, did you connect me with Yes. You did. I came down to your place and connected you up. Yep. Yeah. All right. So. Um, well, is this where you guys, you would have met already. When did we first meet? We first met. Uh, t- I, I, this is a funny story because all <laughs> I knew about NASCAR was like Days of Thunder, like you know Tom Cruise. And I get a call from Ty Norris, and he's like, "Well, what happened first was I get a call once from Eddie Wood. Hey, would you be interested in coming out to Sears Point and teaching Elliot Sadler, you know, how to drive NASCAR?" And I'm like, "Ah, uh, w- you know what? I'm not really a teacher." And all I did was this first race at, in 1998 at uh, at Sears Point. Right for Jimmy Spencer. Yes, that's my was my big break, and uh, and that's a funny story too. But but uh, they're telling I'm I'm not really a teacher. I don't know. I go. What are you thinking? He goes. Well, we're going to bring two cars out and do some lead follow. I go. So I I get to drive a car for two days. He's like, I, Yeah, I'll do it. So I went out there and met Elliot, a great guy. I yeah. golf one day, and I mean he's just chill and not nothing what I expected. Like Lots really really cool guy, and. Uh, at the end of two days, you know, the Wood brothers are like, you know, Eddie Wood comes up to me and he goes, man, Boris, thanks a lot. That was great, man. That was really good. He goes, what, 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 what do we owe you? And I go, uh, I don't, 
I'm no, nothing. You pay my expenses. That's good. We're good. You do me a favor down the road. No, no, no. I got to pay you. What, what do you charge? I go, I don't really charge. I, I don't do this. So just forget about it. But like 10 days later, I got a check in the mail that was like the biggest check I've gotten in racing to date. And I'm like, holy crap. You know, but that really wasn't what it was. He must have went back and told everyone in the NASCAR garage because I started getting calls from people. And and so Ty Norris called me once. He goes, ah, Dale Sr. wants to know if you'll go teach uh, Dale Jr., you know, road course at Sears Point. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I was thinking, I was almost going to say, why didn't he call me himself? Right? But <laughs> he did. I didn't say it. Yeah. So I, I get there. And I'll, ne I'll never forget this because it felt like days of thunder. I walk up and, you know, Tony, Uri, and, yeah. and, and Tony, Jr. Tony Jr. are there. And they're working on cars. And I walked up and said, hey, and Boris said, well, well, you know, like all. And they're like, like, man, I don't think they want me here. Like, yeah. They're, they're, oh, they're they, into they, their deal. They like, give you, you that know, vibe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like into their deal. And so I'm sitting around like like for 15 minutes like, man, I don't know. Should I leave? Or like, what's, what should I do? And, and uh, your engine guy, Helicopter, I kind of knew him. I don't even remember his real name. But I go, hey, man, are you sure these guys want me here? He goes, no, no, no. I go, when's, when's Junior showing up? Oh, he's in the trailer. You should go in and meet him. I'm like, and I, I was like, you know, you always get like a preconceived notion, right? I go, Dale Jr., he's got to be a spoiled brat. You know, rich kid, famous dad. Like, he's going to be a dick, right? So I go in there, and, man, you were like, it was just crazy because it was the opposite. Like, you were just completely chill, and you were just like, and I'm like, man, this dude's cool as hell. Like, what, what was he doing when you walked in? You sleeping. Remember? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sleeping. Yep, that, sleeping. You probably remember the jet lag, right? right. <laughs> right. But, but, but we were just talking. going back, not uh, going okay. out to California. Sorry. I don't remember what we talked about, but it was just like uh, it was like when I met Mark and Brian. It was just like I like this guy. Like, I mean, instantly I know either way. Like, are you my guy or not my guy? Right. And you were my guy. And then I remember. So then I'm just sitting around. The test is going on. And, and the funny thing is, when they they finally throw me in the car. And I think I went pretty quick, and yeah. I told him a few things, and the car went faster. And then, like, that night, man, you got to come out to dinner. You know, I went out to dinner with Tony <laughs> Senior Jr. <laughs> they were all when, – when, <laughs> when they knew I could give him something, they were like, hey, buddy, 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 buddy. <laughs> 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 it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell us about that race with Jimmy Spencer, that first – so how'd that happen? My, that happened was I was on my I, f I remember this story like I can't remember what I did yesterday, but I remember this because I I'm on my way to Mo Sport for a BMW race, sports car race, and I was in the uh, I was in the Hartford Airport waiting for a connection flight. And my phone rings and it's this guy Travis Carter. I mean he sounded like I mean a Southern <laughs> boy, and he's like Jimmy Spencer told me he goes. He wants you to, you know, he hit his head at Indy the week before he got a concussion. So he goes, I want to know if you want a relief drive. And, like, when he's telling me this, I'm like, I'm walking back out to the uh, U.S. Air, and I'm looking at all the flights to Charlotte, <laughs> thinking, when could I get to Charlotte? Right. Right? And so he goes, how soon can you get to Charlotte? I go, I'll be there at 4 o'clock <laughs> looking yeah. at the flight. Right? <laughs> and so we hang up the phone, and uh, I call my guy, Tom Milner, from BMW, and say, I have an opportunity to do a NASCAR race. Can you get someone to drive for me this week? And I hate doing this to you. And he was all, all supportive of you. I mean, there's 10 guys lined up behind you that will drive your car, right? So he goes, no problem. Go do it. So I land in Charlotte and drive up to Statesville, and I walk into their shop. And I was trying, looking for Travis Carter. Oh, he's in the back. And I'll never forget this because he was just sitting on a workbench eating a quarter pounder with cheese, just <laughs> chill as could be, you know, and he's a really southern guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, well, let me introduce you to Donnie Wingo. And they were just doing the final setup before they push it in the trailer and head to the Glen. And I go over there, and Donnie, Donnie Wingo, we meet. And he goes, then he goes to me, he goes, hey, uh, what do you like? You like, what kind of control arms you like on the top? You like eight and a half, nine and a half? You like longer? And I'm like, Hey, uh, do you know that I've never driven one of these? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. You know, then, then all of a sudden he started, then he, what about Castor? And I'm like, I got to remind you again. Do you know that I've never driven one of these things? And so, <laughs> and so we get to Watkins Glen the next day. I get to fly up in their plane, and that was the first time I ever got to do that. And uh, we're getting ready for practice. And the way you guys do practice is you're always taped up, and you're just doing qualifying runs right away, uh -huh. right? And they got the thing all taped up, and I'm like, Hey, since I've never driven one of these, is there any way I could just run? Right. <laughs> like, untape it and just run? He goes, yeah, that's probably a good idea. So I'm out there running. I think I ran, like, 25 laps, and I was probably at the bottom of the board. And all of a sudden, he comes on the radio and goes, now, Boris, there's one thing you're leading in. You ain't, you ain't really shit on the board, but, but you've run more laps than any of them boys. Are <laughs> you ready for some qualifying tires? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And so uh, – 
they taped the thing up, and I think I, I run second or third, like, and they were just like, wow. It changed after that. My life changed after that. What, I mean, what? That, crazy. That moment. That moment. I mean, and then the next day, I, qual- I think I qualified fifth that day. And, uh, but Jimmy Spencer started, and then, like, there was a caution at lap nine, and I got in, and, you know, his seat's, like, this wide. Sure. And, I mean, we did a driver change, and I'm in the back. And You're probably getting thrown around a little bit, right? Yeah, I, mean, they, I didn't care. I was, having didn't a care. Big, I was having a blast, you know. Like, and, and, and I think I went from, like, last to, like, 10th, and I spun out on my own because there was somebody spun in one. Then I went from last to, like, 12th, and then someone spun me out, which is kind of a cheap shot. And I, I forget where I finished, but – the, the, the craziest thing to me after the race was, you know, on the cool down lap, they're all saying, yeah, good job, good job, good job, good job. And I was, I was like ET in the river, man. I was tired, like, man, oh man, you know, just, I was tired. Like, and I go in the, in the hauler and I'm like sweating. And I mean, I probably spent 15 minutes just like before I could change. And I was like, oh my God, these guys do this every day. And then I come out after and everyone's gone. It was just a truck driver. Yeah. You know, like in road racing, they sit there for hours and talk about it and take the tent down. <laughs> here, I go, did I do something wrong? <laughs> like, they're all gone. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. So um, I don't, you know, it's funny. I don't remember that Sonoma test. So after the Sonoma test where you helped us, what was the, what was our next? The thing was, we just, we just kind of bounce. We ran into each other from we, time to time. Yeah, we'd run into each other time to time because I'd do a couple of nationwide races here and there, and then and then the cup races. And and your dad, like, it's funny. Like out of all the famous people I've met, your your dad had this thing about him where like he he I like I I could talk to anybody, but your dad just made me like, oh my god, I I, I think of something to say. Like I know why he starstruck, right? Oh yeah. And that first race when I was sitting there at at uh, Watkins Glen before the race in that morning, you know, I qualified fifth, but I was going to start last, you know, get in. I was sitting on the pit wall waiting for driver intros, and I hear this, how's Boris going to do today? And I kind of look up, and I remember seeing your dad and Rusty Wallace and someone else talking, and then I looked down again, he goes, how's Boris going to do today? And it was your dad. Talking to you? And I'm like, Sh- he knows my name. <laughs> and I was just like, I uh, uh, ho- hope I stay on the road. You know, like like that. He goes, oh, you'll do fine. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know. And <laughs> and my my Mark, you know, uh, no fear guy, he was like, man, you're going to come through the field. You go, you're going to put some donuts down Dale Earnhardt's car, you know, when you go by. I mean, we were just joking around, yeah. right? And I remember in the race, coming out of turn one, when I was, I was, I was flying, and he was the next car. And going up through the S's, I started thinking about what he said. Oh, no, you know, don't do that. And then as we came to the top of the S's, I kind of got a run on him. And, and you know you had that one – all right, am I going to go down the, am I going to go or am I going to go? And I right. was just, just about to decide. And your dad's going like this. And I'm like, shit, he wants me off the track. <laughs> <laughs> but he just waved me right by. And I, I could not believe it. Like he just waved me by like, that's crazy. And, and, and then after I, you know, I remember these days, like after, like where he'd come up to me and I'd just be sitting there in a milk crate or something. He'd grab me by the back of the neck and squeeze. And he said, how you doing, man? My boy can't stop talking about it. You did a great job at Sears Point. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> like, 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 that's, like, I could never talk to him. Yeah. Right? And then I think it was a year later I was doing – Jimmy Spencer put a car together for me. And there was a bunch of us at, at Watkins Glen yes. testing. And, and that was a big thing. I, and I was pretty fast. And your dad came down – I saw him walking towards me, you know, down the garage, you know, on this test. And I'm like, uh-oh. And he goes, hey, said He never, ever said the name Boris. He just said, said. And he kind of goes, man, I'm running like crap, man. You do me a favor and jump in, run a few laps in my car. And, and we start walking down. And I'm like, holy shit. I'm going to get to drive the three car? Like, that, that's what I was thinking. And we're, we're walking down in the car. And he goes, let's see if you get in there, right? And so I get in the thing. And, and he sat real funny. Like, he was leaned back like a lazy boy. <laughs> My knees are up in my face, and, and he's kind of lit. He's in the door sill like this, and he goes, man, said, you don't fit very good in there, do you? He goes, can, can you drive it? And I was just sitting in there with a big smile like, I know one thing. I feel like a bad mother. I won't say it on air. <laughs> I go, but I know I'll drive it on one condition. I go, I know I'm the only race fan that ever get to drive your car. I want to picture me driving this thing. I just I don't know why I said it. He goes, just come. Well, you'll be fine. <laughs> right. So... I get all my stuff on, and I didn't know it was a big deal that no one ever drove your father's car. Yeah. Like, like I, I had no idea. And, and I went out and did a few laps, and as I'm coming in the garage, it looked like I'm like, what the hell is going on? All these people and cameras. And I pull in, and they're, 
And your dad takes the window net down and it's just all snapping pictures and stuff. And I'm like thinking, this is crazy. It felt like an EF hunting commercial because how's the car? And it was like quiet. And I'm like, man, if you drove mine, you wouldn't, this thing's bad. This piece of crap. And he goes, in the hauler. So like we, we go in the hauler, me, him, and, and uh, it's great. Chief Kevin Hamlin. Yeah, Kevin Hamlin. Yeah. And we're sitting there and I go, well, first off, I go, Pushing your brake pedal is like pushing a rock, man. You need a smaller master. I got it. It's where you're, he goes, man, I told them boys I wore my leg out at Sears Point, and they don't listen. And I'm thinking, how do they not listen to you? Like, I, And then so I kind of give him this thing about, you know, the front springs and the rear bar and this and that. And he goes to Kevin Hamlin, and he goes, change it all, man. Let me know when you're done. And so now it's just me and your dad staring at each other in the <laughs> hall, right? And I'm thinking, like, ah, say, say something cool. Come up with something cool, you know, like – I was so nervous, and, and Airplane 2 was on the TV, and I go, man, that's a good movie, huh? <laughs> Here's something else. And he goes, yeah, that guy's funny, and he kind of put his hand on the thing, and he walked out of the lounge, I'm like, oh, God damn it. That's all you could think of? <laughs> Stupid. And, and, then, and then your dad goes, hey, said, you want anything to eat? And I'm like, yeah, make me a peanut butter and jelly and, <laughs> and cut the crust off and hurry it up, like just joking, right? And, and he didn't say a word, and I'm like, oh, my God. I just pissed him off. I, if there was a door in the front of the hall, I would have left. Right. I would have left. And it felt like an hour I was sitting there, but it was probably two minutes. And all of a sudden, your dad comes in with a peanut butter and jelly on a paper towel. He goes, I got your water, too, said. And I go, hey, you didn't cut the crust off. He goes, no, man, that makes your hair curly. I don't want to ruin your look. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, so, and so we sat there, and we're eating peanut butter and jelly, and I'm thinking, how good is this? Like, like, and then I finally kind of got comfortable with your dad Like at that point. And then so we get up to walk out. And he's like, uh, hey, man, you want a signed hat or something? I'm like, like, no, nah, man, I don't wear hats. He goes, yeah, if I had hair like that, I wouldn't wear a hat either. Did you enjoy that conversation with Boris said? Well, you should listen to the entire podcast. The Dale Jr. Download is available on all major podcast platforms. <laughs> <laughs>